ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you guys for showing up. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, today we'll break down the Tennessee Titans versus the Colts. Game two. It's a big one. We have the man himself, Gerald McGrath. What's up, bud? How you guys doing? How you doing today? Yeah, I'm, I'm good, man. Again, um, day after Thanksgiving. So everyone who's watching, uh, happy thanks, uh, happy late Thanksgiving. Thank you guys for. I want to be. Want to say something. Say I, I'm thankful for everyone who's watched the show, who subscribed to my show, who gave the likes, who gave the dislikes. I don't care. I mean, <laughs> any feedback's good feedback. So again. Uh, I just want to, uh, I appreciate everyone who's, who's been uh, a supporter of me from the very beginning of uh, very first episode to now and um, just a Titan fan in general. So thank you guys. Thank you, Gerald, for, you know, not only um, coming in the first NFL uh, football player to join the show, but also uh, a friendship that we built, man. So it, it's um uh, I'm thankful for you, and I'm thankful for anyone who's watching or now who's listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Ooh, check that out. <laughs> love it, man. Love it. Yeah, definitely, man. So, again, how was your uh, Thanksgiving? Let's 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 uh, let's dive in into that before we start talking. Sit off. Un, it was definitely <laughs> uncommon, man. I'm uh, actually moving, uh, moving. And with my family and stuff like that, with the COVID and stuff like that, uh, and I was coaching uh, high school ball here in Nashville um, with at Innsworth. Uh, I was living uh, apart with the family until the season was over with just because of contact tracing. My daughter going to school and my wife going to work, just wanted to make sure that I was doing my due diligence. So um, I'm actually getting ready to move out, move in with them, uh, come – come Sunday. So, you know, I'm actually excited about that, you know, especially getting ready for the holiday season and things of that nature. So I'm just getting little things moved out. So the wife took the kids to Florida nice. so they can enjoy some time um, while I get the little things out. So, you know, it's def definitely been a good one. Definitely been a good one. So there's a lot of, a lot of big things happening Sunday for you then, not only the game, but in life in general, bro. That's cool. Oh, no, without a doubt. Now I'm getting everything out, uh, you know, out by Saturday, Saturday night. I'm, everything is out so I can be make sure I'm watching Sunday, <laughs> Sunday night football and Sunday football in general. So, you know, everything like my wife was like, you want to go and we'll be back Saturday. I'm like, nah, because I don't want to be doing nothing on Sunday. So I decided to stay back and and get the, the little stuff uh, taken care of. So. Yeah. Definitely, man. And uh, talk about Thanksgiving, man. I, I, lo I love eating. I, lo I love Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's uh, my second favorite holiday. But you know what I'm more thankful for is that um, we didn't have to play Thanksgiving or that we didn't have we didn't have that show up like the Cowboys had. Oh, man, I was loving it, though. Ooh, man. I, on It was a good feeling, man. It was a good feeling. I'm so <laughs> Surprised we ain't hear nobody get fired today. I mean, I know it's still a week, but man, that fourth and one, and you throw a ten yard curl route. Like, so, oh, yeah. so I'm giving to Zeke, and then no, how about the the one that was really like, uh, I was like, what the hell are you guys doing? Was the, I think it was the fourth and ten. They do the fake punt. Yeah, the fake punt came because of the first fourth and one, but I'm not tripping on that. It's You're just, not tripping on that. It was in, in their own, I think, thirty yard line. Fourth and one was on that fourth and one was in their territory no, too. No, that I, I was agree. actually, you know, within the first half where you gave mm -hmm. you gave points away. So I mean, like, you know. They they were only know. down by four and it was it was the beginning of the fourth quarter. Why why would you I don't know, maybe maybe it was something that uh McCarthy saw that that we didn't, but clearly they still lost. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That was desperation at its finest. Yeah, ooh, that's ugly. Oh, man, at the end of the day, man, Titan fans, you watch Ryan and you watch other other teams play, man. Yep, it could be worse. Exactly, seven and three, guys. Seven and three is and not bad at all. No, not at all. Especially and 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 let's especially let's dive into this game, man. Seven and three going against the Colts, and this is basically this is for the AFC South. This is yeah. it. 
This is all for, for the whole thing. I mean, it, unfortunately, it comes down to the Colts. It's always going to come down to the – I felt like there was going to be the Colts and stuff. But, again, we saw the Texans. To Houston too. <laughs> yeah, the Texans. We might come down to Houston, too. So, you definitely want to get this one. Exactly. Man, so, we, we played tough. Houston the last game. They The Houston still plays the Colts twice. It would be nice yep. if they could, you know, sweep them. But you know, yep. if they beat them once, it would be nice. But – um. We we can never count out Houston, even though their record is horrible. But again, they had a they had a they tough played. they had a they tough play. They played Baltimore, Pittsburgh, yeah, the Kansas City Chiefs. They played top the they played the teams that you that we were going to face in the playoffs. Exactly. So you do not want to lose to the Colts twice. And Houston comes around and beat the Colts twice because with the way Deshaun Watson is playing right now, yeah. they could beat the Colts twice. They could beat them twice. I can see that now. So you do not want that to happen at all. Hopefully, I mean, I yeah, mean. yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. <laughs> uh, the coach, you always hold your breath, man. That's one of the the, the the divisional rivals, mm-hmm. you know, you don't take those for granted, man. I don't care how bad of a season they have. They could be 0 and 9, 0 and 10. You don't, you know. You, never take you, them for yeah. granted. Yeah, never. I know, I know firsthand about that guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So go, going into this game, right? Both teams are seven and three, obviously. Um the Colts are three points favorite as of right now, which which is fine. It's not a big, it's not a big deal. It, you I, want it like that. You yeah. want it. Titans play better underdogs. Do exactly. not play better favorites. So this was – I wanted you to come on because the first game we played against the Colts, obviously, that we had you and me, we are actually at the game live. We saw a hand in hand and see our asses get handed to us on Thursday night. So now you have a little bit better – uh, just a better view – on the Colts and the schemes they come up with and how, I mean, unfortunately, we let Phillip Rivers just just beat yeah, us. Do, do what he, right? Yeah, do what he wants. Yeah, he do what he what wanted. He um, let's talk a little bit about the injury report, okay? So there's three guys automatically, obviously, out. Well, actually, four if you want to count Jalen Brown, but we already knew Jalen Brown's not going to play. Uh, Adam Humphreys is not going to play. Uh, Mike, uh, Michael uh, Pruitt, he's out. And then we have a Dory Jackson again. Yeah. What, what do you, you think? I'm thinking I'm not even, you know, holding my breath for Dory. I don't even know if he's going to play this year, to be honest. Wait, wait, what do you think right now, man? It's just he plays in the playoffs, man. They, they hold him to the playoffs. And then, you know, everybody else, like Corey Davis, Doubter, or whatever you may want to say, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, you picked up a Dory Jackson's uh, fifth-year option. You don't pick up Corey Davis, and you want to look at production-wise and what you're getting out of guys. And we want to talk about signing guys back. You better sign Corey Davis back. You better find a way to clear some space and get this guy back, you know, and especially what you're seeing because we're looking at this team 7-3, and three, Dor Jackson or Dor Jackson has not contributed to the seven and three so far. I'm yep. not saying that he's not worth it. I'm just saying is when you're looking at those guys, those first round picks that we brought in, and what you're getting from guys, you're getting your money's worth from Corey Davis. And, and you, you know, I don't know if it's Arthur Smith. It might be Arthur Smith's uh, coaching styles, coaching philosophy mixed in with a uh, Derrick Henry mixed in with Ryan Tannehill, but you were seeing the Corey Davis that is producing at a high level, um, especially in a, in a time that we need it. We haven't seen anything out of Adore Jackson has been, um, his job has been filled by the, the committee as a whole. So, you know, I definitely think that, you know, if I'm a Titans, you know, if I'm in the Titans building and I'm a coach, looking at it from a coach's perspective, we just want to get them back for the playoffs. Now, okay. you get them back for the playoffs, how much rest is he going to have? Or, or are we looking at the experience coming in that he can do things? But at the end of the day, if he ain't practicing, 
how much, you know, you know, practice is everything, you know, at the end of the day, especially if you're not playing the game. So that one to me is still left out to the verdict. It's still a great option to have, um, especially when he's your number one guy. Um, I think you take a lot of pressure off of Malcolm Butler. Hopefully you're thinking Desmond King comes into his own in the, within the scheme. So then you can now sub out uh, Christian Fulton, Chris Jackson. You can you can now deploy those guys in uh, throughout the game to where you're minimizing the snaps that they have, but they're still going to give you snaps. They're still going to have experience in the playoffs. So there's a lot of things that you can consider as being, you know, it's on the positive side. You know, at least he's still here. We still have him mm -hmm. uh, for the playoffs. Because like we know, man, the playoffs is going to be a whole nother season, especially if you're thinking about adding um, extra teams into it. So Definitely. Uh, another thing uh, for the injury report, we had Roger Staffel and uh, Ben Jones. Both uh, were limited in practice throughout the whole week. Uh, it is now a game time decision, but I, I assume that they should play. I think they'll be all right. I think without that's, a doubt, man, yeah. you're questionable. You're probably going to play. You know, if you're looking at for the Colts, uh, you know, they got uh, Quinn Nelson with a back injury. You know, he was limited practice today, so he's going to be questionable. Then you got the center, Ryan Kelly, that uh, did not practice. He did not practice Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Yeah, he ain't. Um, you know, that that is really going to be a game time decision. You know, I know he's questionable, but. You know, that's still, that's still going to be game time when you're talking about not practicing Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, of course, no, you know, a lot of people probably didn't practice with, you know, with Thanksgiving. But then also Friday, um, you know, you're really going to – you're going to question that right there. You know, and so. especially having um, – they're going to miss their, their top player, um, DeForest, uh, DeForest Buckner. He got put on the COVID list, so he's not going to play. And he's yeah, yeah, big yeah. presence. That's a big hit on the defense, which is already yeah. top ranked defense, as we know. No, without a doubt. And watching that game, man, and I was talking to you, I was telling you, man, that defensive line and and the shoestring tackles and the uh attention to details that they had with Derrick Henry in that game that I felt yeah, they were huge. You know, Derrick Henry was hitting the hole. And they were making freak – They, I'm talking about game-changing plays, play after play. And then I was telling you with that the way the Tennessee offense is and with Derrick Henry, you know, can they sustain that in the fourth quarter? But we all know with the special teams and things of that nature, we got down there, really kind of put Derrick Henry out the picture. Yeah. Um, you know, he definitely made his presence felt with, you know, with the, you know, his ability to close the cylinder and to help other guys make shoestring tackles. But, I mean, it wasn't like Darren, Derrick Henry was, you know, shut off that whole game. Like, he didn't have any big runs. He did. Guys just found a way to – they found a way to get him on the ground. So, without those guys, him and the other D tackle, um, you know, that's really going to play a big difference in this game, especially with us having uh, – you know, I left tackle. I don't know what Tyson Braille looks like. I don't know if he's out or not. And I'm thinking that he may be out. I don't see him on the, the injury report um, myself. But uh, with having him out, you know, that's really going to make a big difference. And so that kind of evens out, you know, the playing field. Definitely. Especially um, for this rematch, okay? Um, last week's game – Felt like it was like a, a playoff game that we needed it, but um, out of all the remaining games for for this season, I mean, this one has playoff implications. This one has AFC South champions written all over it. And we just need again. We kind of let the first game slip out of our hands, like you said. You never, you always want to be in control of your destiny, correct? And we just, it's like they they didn't show up. What are the three keys, in your opinion, for a Titans victory? I, I like talking about this. Then we'll get into the predictions. But what are your three keys that you think the Titans need uh, to beat this Colts team, man? I never really talk about this, especially, you know, I think it gets lost in the, in the, in the ranks and things of that nature. But actually watching the game, the last game in itself is establishing 
uh, the line of scrimmage on, on the defensive front. You know, we always want to talk about the defense as a whole, but, I mean, I watched the game, and the coach, the offensive line, dominated our defensive front. When I say our defensive front, guys, I'm not talking about the linebackers, the outside linebackers. I'm talking about our down three defensive line. They dominated our defensive line. And as a linebacker, um, and, and as guys played my whole life, your, your defense alignment allows you as a linebacker to make plays. When I'm sitting at five yards deep and I got a defense alignment in my lap at three yards, I can't make a play for nothing else but three or four yards or four-yard tackle. And so that line of scrimmage, um, I thought the coach owned the line of scrimmage, especially on rundowns, and I thought that made it – I thought that made it – very, very hard for us to get in second and long, third and long situations. When you're running the ball, you're getting three yards, four yards. You know, there's one play, like I told you, y'all, man, Jeffrey Simmons. Jeffrey Simmons probably played one of the worst games that I've seen him play. And he's 15 yards down the field on a run play. You never want to see that happen from your defense tackle. Like, never. And so, you know, I, I really feel – like establishing establishing the the defensive line, the line of scrimmage, that's going to be key for us, especially when you're talking about losing Jayon Brown. You're going to have to put Will Compton or, you know, you, you put in David Long. I really think that uh, Will Compton will probably be your better fit. I don't think David Long is ready uh, yet okay. um, as far as the progression and things of that nature. And then what you want to see is, Rashawn Evans take over Jayon Brown's role on second and long third down situations when you're talking about putting in a nickel package because what what had been happening was Jayon Brown would stay in the game Rashawn Evans really would come off the field so we really wasn't having Rashawn Evans on the field on third and long situation so you really would just love to see him take over Jayon Brown's uh, position on the third down he's more than capable of doing that He's more than capable of covering the tight end, covering the back out the backfield. He's an athletic guy. He's a great tackler in space. Um, so you just want to see him gravitate in that role that he already has been waiting on to gravitate to. And mm -hmm. there's just ask, uh, you know, Will Compton and uh, David Long to fill in, which I thought, Dave, you know, everybody wants to say about when I was reading the tweet and it was like, I'm nervous about Will Compton coming in. I don't. I wouldn't be nervous. Will Compton came in with a Ravens defense with, a, with against the Ravens offense that was run heavy, and he yeah. held his own um, in the third and fourth quarter to he give put us himself a chance. In, yeah, he game. put himself you know in. You know what I mean? Own spot. You're not gonna. You're not gonna be tested more so than you were in that Ravens game. You're not gonna be tested like that in this in this Colts game. Um, just the, the way that they employed their offense and things of that nature. So. It, it, it'll actually be an easier task for him. It's going to be the who's going to cover who situation, especially when we get Jack Doyle coming back. Who's going to be, you know, who's going to take Jack Doyle? Who's going to take uh, a Hines out the backfield? That's going to be the biggest thing. You know, I think after you look at the last matchup, thought Jalen Brown did a good job. He got his ankles broken for one touchdown. On, on, on Hines, nobody want to talk about that, but he had him to rights. He shook him, didn't keep his feet moving. And after that, what we saw was the safety started covering the running back. And um, and I can see Rashawn Evans possibly taking over Jack Doyle. I like that matchup. I like that if we do that early on. Um, you got Christian um, – you got Christian Fulton coming back. Hopefully uh, Chris Jackson comes back. Uh, Desmond King hopefully is in a better position. Now we possibly could put Desmond King on Pittman. You can put uh, Malcolm Butler on T.Y. Hilton and then everybody else we can cover by committee. So, you know, I really do like our matchups. Um, I, I think we really got a good opportunity. We talk about turnovers, making Phillip Rivers force the ball to us. You're looking at last game. Bowler actually got an interception, just couldn't keep his feet in bounds in the end zone. So yeah. it's there. It is there. Do we have the guys that that we can put out in this game to kind of give us that matchup? We all know Malcolm Butler ain't playing off. So I know we talk about our corners playing off. 
We ain't talking about Malcolm Butler. Malcolm Butler doesn't play off. I was watching him most of the game, and I was looking at his stand, man. Malcolm Butler is going to – he's going to challenge anybody he step up – he steps up on. That's one of the things that I really love about Malcolm Butler. I think that um, them keeping him – kind of showed what they believed in him. I've always been a Malcolm Butler fan. I got some of my Titan fans like, man, Malcolm Butler be getting up plays. I'm like looking at him like, look, Malcolm, Buck, Malcolm, Malcolm Butler is challenging every single throw and catch. Yeah. Every single throw and catch. Even when we looked last week, Andrews had a big – I mean, Andrew, I mean, he was giving up size, but, I mean, he's there. It ain't like he ain't in the picture. So, I really like – what we can do this week as far as uh, as far as who we have on certain guys and what those guys are actually capable of doing and feeling comfortable in doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I, I really, really like these matchups uh, coming up this week, man, across the board for the Titans defense. Hopefully um, one thing um, we tend to do apparently is, you know, we start off good. Our first opening drive is nice. Uh, not always, not we always score a touchdown, but recently we've been scoring touchdowns. But then the offense kind of just disappears, you know, and yeah. it's been happening. I don't know if, you know, our, I, mean, I think we have the right guys to do it. I don't know if it's like the, in the coaching staff, if they like just overthink things or they think too much and just not let the players play. Um, but we just need we need to start off, uh, start off quick. And we just need to put the pressure on on Philip Rivers again. He's battling an injury right now, so I, I he, he has. I think he practiced. He was limited on practice. I think it's his ankle, to be honest with you. But as long as we can put some at least some pressure, at least knock him down a couple times, get him frustrated because that's his Achilles heel. Once you put pressure on him, he starts making some boneheaded decisions. He usually throws it into uh, you know double team or something like that, and he usually gets picked off. So. Um, as long as we can get to Phillip Rivers, uh, I do like our matchup. I think we need to play aggressive. And our special teams, obviously, should be a lot better than last time just because Brett Curran is back. He was practicing. And um, that should give us uh, confidence and, and a little bit of a morale boost. Because, um, again, when we watch the game, man, all, all, all four, like you said, all four sides of the – all four phases, we, we weren't winning anything. So no, no, and and the, and the biggest key mm-hmm. and the biggest thing that I took out of the last game, because like I told you, man, I was frustrated. You know, like I was frustrated as not only um, a former player, but uh, just as a, a competitor, man. Like you just look on the sidelines and you saw guys, you know, not into it, and you're looking at that type of game, and I'm looking at like crap, man. Like you control your own destiny. Like let's go. Everybody's looking around, waiting for somebody else to make a play. The thing that you love and that, you know, that I really, really um, tip my hat off to the guys was I didn't see the same thing versus the Ravens. I didn't. And I – and I and because to me, I was looking at the Colts game, and I'm sitting there like, man, we play like this, man. Ravens going to beat us by 30. Yeah. Because to be honest with you, the Ravens team is actually a more, um, a more scarier team it's than the Colts. Cool. The Colts are, you know, the Colts has a great defense. Colts has a great defense. Don't get me wrong, but as far as opportunistic um, for a team, um, that Ravens defense was very, very, very good. But that offense also could also contribute to uh, big plays as well. And I thought the Titans did a great job coming out, coming ready to play, physical battle. They did what they needed to do. They found a way to win, made adjustments in the second half, came out. God stepped up when you needed them to step up. And, you know, that that is what we didn't see in the Colts game. We just didn't see guys step up. Guys just didn't step up. You know what I mean? Like we can say what we want about Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry stepped up, but when you get down like that, you, you kind of force the issue out of his hands especially the way the, the Colts played us because they were loading the box. It, it didn't look like it. It didn't look like it at all at most of the times because they, they kept two high safeties, mm-hmm. but they were rolling on the snap. Okay. And so this, this game is going to be a big game on Tannehill at being, um, being precise and trusting the defense, 
trusting the call, trusting his playmakers on the outside. And, guys, when I say trusting your defense, man, don't expect Tannehill to be great. You know, to win this game, man, you got to come out. You got you to challenge those guys deep. You know, you got Derrick Henry. You, they're missing two deep in, inside guys. Okay, well, guess what? If Derrick Henry had the game he had last game, and I thought his game was pretty darn well, you know, depending on, you know, what was going on, like I'm still feeding him the rock. And so for, in order for them to stop the rock, man, they got they to they, they have to commit. And it's going to have to be a single high look. They, they can't keep too high back there and expect to stop Derrick Henry every single play. Not to mention Derrick Henry, but you also got for, uh, Forte and you got uh, Nichols. And then, if I'm not mistaken, Rashad Evans might uh, – not Rashad Evans, but Derrick Evans may be in the game plan this week. So we got another element, and this 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 element with Evans that he brings to this offensive uh, this offensive scheme is a more speed burst, still with a power kind of like if you guys watched uh, yesterday ball. You're talking about a guy like Gibson. Think about Gibson, nice. but think of a guy a little. But think about think about a guy that is faster than Gibson, but can run in between the tackles. So he he will bring a different element to the game. And what it's going to take is when you get those one-on-one matchups, kind of like last week, and we already knew you got Peters, Jimmy Smith, and uh, and Humphreys out there, you got to win one-on-one matchups on the outside. So this is really going to give Corey Davis, um, Corey Davis, um, A.J. Brown, John New Smith, first group, those guys, man, they got to step up. They got to step up. They got to step up. So when they want to come and they want to load the box and do play action game, I mean, we got to make them pay. You yeah. got to make them pay. And so what I'm saying, you know, Tannehill trusting the defense, man, screw that. You know, if you see something and you want to take a shot, take the shot. Take the shot. And the defense has got to back you up. Because just think about this. If you throw the ball deep, say it's third and long, you throw the ball deep on the third and long or you take a deep shot and it's an interception it's just like a punt it's just like a punt yeah still flipping the field and defense got to come out and you got to get a three and out you got to get a stop but what that does is that 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 opens it up to say you know what (laughs) we taking shots and our defense we're gonna take shots our defense is gonna stop you guys and then what you going to do? Are you going to still play the run? Because we're going to hit one of these shots. We're going to get a, a, a P.I. Corey Davis is going to get one. We might throw a hit screen to A.J. And he take it for 50 yards. But you're going to have to get out the box. And you get out the box, then you're going to have to worry about Derrick Henry for the rest of the game. So it's got to be complimentary football. Man, Tannehill got to let that thing go. You got to let that thing go. You got to leave everything on the table. I don't give a dang if if you throw a pick, you throw two picks, so what? At this, and, and I'm telling you guys, I know you guys are fans. I'm telling you guys from a player that plays defense, man, if you don't score, you don't win. So as a defensive player, my whole mindset is, you know what? I don't give a dang where you put that ball at. I'm coming out to play my best. And it's going to take the defense to step up this week. They built the confidence from last week. You stop Lamar Jackson, one of the most prolific runner passers. I don't care what your mindset is on traditional quarterbacks or whatever it may be. The kid, Lamar Jackson, is freaking talented. He has no weapons around him. So, you know, you stop a kid like that that can do it on his feet, throw the ball. We come right back to a Phillip Rivers. Your your confidence should be sky high on what you can do as a defensive front. There, there it is. I mean, I agree with you completely. We um we definitely need to we need to play better on all sorts of the phases of the ball and stuff. And um, I think it should be an interesting game. Again, it's I think it's going to be a close. I don't think it's going to be a shootout. It's going to be a, a grindy, a grimy, uh, close, uh, low-scoring game. Uh, let's get some predictions. I think it's going to be like 24 to 17 uh, in favor, obviously, of the Titans. Not just because it's the Titans, but I realistically think uh, this rematch will be better prepared. And um, even though they, they did beat us down that Thursday night, I think our mindset um, – 
coming off the Ravens win, um, guys have gotten um, their confidence back. They, they, they seemed, you know, they wanted it. They came back in the Ravens game. I mean, A.J. Brown um, looks good. Um, so Derrick Henry. So I, th- I think uh, the Titans w- should pull this off. What do you think, man? I, I, I agree, man. I, I, I say beat them by 17, man. I, I beat them by 17. I'm thinking uh, I'm thinking more of like 30, like thinking uh, Colts 17, Titans 34-ish, 35-ish, somewhere in that, that, in that area. You know, I, I, I see it. I, I think it's written on the walls. Phillip Rivers is due some interceptions, some picks. He's battling. The key, the key to this is, is you knock Phillip Rivers out. Phillip Rivers can't go. Are you prepared for Jacoby Brissett? Are you prepared for that? That to me, that to me is the most scariest thing ever. Because I don't think Phillip Rivers pulls this one out. And I don't think he, I don't think Phillip Rivers pulled that last one out. I think gave him that. We allowed him to do that. We played off coverage. We allowed him to dink and dunk us. Uh, everybody in the media has been saying death by a thousand paper cuts, which is a hundred percent right. Mm-hmm. We allowed them to do that. It was nothing that we did. It's what we gave. It's nothing what they did. It's what we allowed them to do on the defensive side. And so you see that you make some adjustments. We got guys coming back. I don't think Christian Fulton and Chris uh, Chris Jackson even played in the first game. No, so now you're gonna now you're gonna be asking new guys coming in. Desmond King, that was his first game actually active. He was not even he played he played some meaningful snaps, but there was one play late in the third or maybe early fourth where there was a busted coverage and they got a first down. They pulled him out the game. And I'm looking on the sideline and I'm looking at him talking to the coach that it looked like it was probably some type of communication issues. And that's probably from him not even being in the system. So yeah. you're asking, you're getting guys back who are familiar when we're talking about the outside scheme of things. Now, like I told you at the beginning, of, I told you, you asked him what the key is. The key is establishing, establishing, the defensive line of scrimmage from the defensive front, from the defensive front, because at the end of the day, this still is the best um, center guard triangle uh, team in the National Football League. Now, yep. I'm not saying they're one of the tops. No, this is the best center two guard combination in the NFL. These are the best at the best at what they do. They are grimy. They get at you. They block you after the play is over with. It's going to be, I'm in your face all day long. What are you going to do about it? It's going to come to, like, you got to grab you got to grab your, your, your man stuff, grab your lunch pail, your hard hat, and you got to say, you know what, Titan, Titan Nation, we got you guys. We let you guys, we let, we let one go at home when we actually had fans in the stands. Yeah. And so, you know. I really think that it, it it's going to come down to that defensive front, man. It's going to come down to the defensive front. I really like the secondary in the second half of the season. I really do. I like what, they, what they've what they been doing. I think with the new additions and with the added additions, with, like I said, Christian Fulton and Chris Jackson and that, those, you got those young legs in the game. You now allow Desmond King – and Malcolm Butler to actually do what kind of you, we were asking the Dory Jackson to do. And that was, okay, take somebody out the equation. Yeah. Just, just take somebody out the equation. And we haven't had that. We have not had that. And I think Desmond King allows Malcolm Butler to actually be a Dory Jackson. And I'll tell you like this, man, I like, I like a door. I like Malcolm Butler, man. I like Malcolm Butler. He, he might get caught on. He might get beat deep. But you ain't never gonna question his effort. You're never gonna question the weather of fact he is challenging every single throw. And if we're playing a quarterback like Phillip Rivers, this is the game you want to have that at the corner position. 
you want to have somebody that's going to challenge every single throw because Phillip Rivers was not throwing the ball 20 yards field, twenty yards down the field. He's not doing re- that. Yeah, I, re- I remember that. And we were watching it. It was just, you know, quick quick little, little yeah. tosses and stuff. But unfortunately – but hopefully, you know, hopefully um, we come out victorious. I'm actually really excited for the game. I'm nervous, too, obviously. Just because, always, always. Uh, just always, the always. implications, you know, there is a lot on the line for, for the Titans. But don't get, don't get me wrong. We still have, uh, you know, a tough schedule ahead of us as well. We still play Houston the end. We play the Browns, who look really good. So yeah, Cleveland, um, yeah. Like, Cleveland yeah. is the biggest one to me that, it, to me, um, Cle- Cleveland is going to – Cleveland, and just so you fans know, Cleveland is going to be an upscale of the Bengals game. It is going to be an upscale of the Bengals game. They got they, – they can spread you out. Baker can make the throws. But the difference between that is the running game is a two-headed monster. You, but they got they have received they have three plus receivers that can bring you mismatch uh, left and right. Not to mention two tight ends with Njoku and I'm not sure what Njoku's status is. And then they got uh, Hooper from the Falcons. So mm-hmm. that you know what I mean like it ain't you know. But at the end of the day, you beat the Colts, and that, that's why I was so I was teed off. Because I'm like, you beat the Colts then, you beat the Colts now, screw you, you, you screw all these other games, you still are winning the division. Yeah. So, like, at the end of the day, man, don't nothing matter but this game that's in front of us. Because you mess around, you you know, you got to win this game, man. You got to win this game. You don't want to put, you don't want to put your faith in nobody's hands but your own. Definitely. And you got an opportunity you know, I think God's blessing. I mean, God works in mysterious ways, man. They got two guys out, two guys, and I'm sitting there, man. You're looking at DeForest Buckner. I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm telling you, I'm watching. This is the first time I've seen him in person. Mm. DeForest Buckner is a freaking all pro. Everybody want to talk about Aaron Donald and what he does. DeForest Buckner is a man at defensive tackle that is freakishly athletic. He runs sideline to sideline, guys. He is so disruptive in the backfield, making quarterbacks move out the pocket. But he also is so active in the run game for that front that allows that linebacking core, which is a small linebacker core, to feed off of that and to flow free. Because if you don't double the force, then you're screwed. Because the force, he'll make every single tackle in the backfield if you don't get a guy on him. And so what he allows that linebacker core to do and that safety core on that back end, man, he allows those guys to play downhill and play fast and, and, and get to the ball. But without having him, you know, you know, you're hoping that, hey, maybe we can single one guy up and chip yep. up to a linebacker. Now we can get Derrick Henry into the secondary. Now what I was telling you the last time we played him, like, like they were doing such a great job that, it, you know, every so often Henry would hit one but, for, man, I'd be darned if a safety corner linebacker did not find a way to put Derrick Henry on the ground yeah. in the first half. And then what I was telling you is like, okay, that was great. You, they, you, you see that they're playing balls to the wall in the first half. Can they do that in the second yeah. half as well? And so now when you lose that, now you, you, we're talking about Derrick Henry getting up to the second level all game long. It's a possibility he can be getting up all game long. You mix match him with, with Evans. Now you rotate a guy like Evans in, which is a speed factor, a smaller back who's going to get lost in the line kind of like Hines did. Then you come back with four. Like it, it, the, the matchup is in our favor right. to play them the way that the Pittsburgh Steelers played us, and that was to control the ball, control time of possession, and then ultimately – Phillip Rivers does not have that time to dink and dunk us. He has to make those deep throws. He has to try to get a deep play because they got to get points on the board. So this is the opportunity for Titans to play playoff football the way we saw them play last year in the playoffs versus uh, versus uh, New England versus uh, 
versus the Ravens. You see what I'm saying? So we we can control the time of the time of possession. But like I was telling you, it's all going to dictate on Ryan Tannehill. Are you willing to take that shot? Because you might not get a whole bunch. You might get three or four. But are you willing to take that shot when you see it and trust it and trust it? And even if it's an interception, screw it. Mm-hmm. It's an interception, but I took the shot. They understand that I'm not going to sit back. I'm not going to play scared. I'm going to challenge y'all deep. So if y'all want to load the box up, load the box up. But I got a guy on the outside, and A.J. Brown, a guy on the outside with Corey Davis. We're going to take the top off at some point, some point in the game. One of the things I would love to see Khalif Raymond show up in this game because he didn't show up in this game on any stat line until the fourth quarter when they pulled the stars. Pulled everyone I, up. Yeah. I look, I want to see Khalif Raymond at the uh, slot position going up the middle. They want to give us two high cover two coverage. I want to see him take the top off one time. I want to see him throw one deep to Khalif Raymond. I want to see that. I think that's going to open it up. Um, but at the end of the day, man, it, it, this is our game to lose. This ain't a game. This, this ain't a game that you sit back and like, oh man, Coach got our number. Screw that. We can talk about the past and what they did back then. Tight fans, if we keep living, if you guys keep living in the past, then you gonna, we gonna, you guys gonna be like UT fans. You are gonna be like <laughs> UT fans. You can't do that. Yeah. You gotta move on. You gotta move on with the times. This is a new, reg- new regime. Amy Adams Strong is freaking awesome as an owner. She is freaking awesome. Jerry Jones needs to take a note out of her <laughs> out of her notebook. She is awesome. Vrabel, John Robinson, those guys are doing what they need to do. This is not this is not our like I, I'm watching that uh that commercial that uh, ginger ale. This is not your grandma's ginger <laughs> ale and stuff like that. Your, this ain't your grandpa uh Tennessee Titans, man. This ain't. This is a different era, man. And we gave them, we gave them one. And that's the mindset you gotta have when you when you Tennessee Titans coming in this game. Cause I guarantee you guys, we came into the Baltimore Ravens game and we were sitting there saying, shoot, like we gonna win this game. Last time I checked, Baltimore Ravens had beat the Colts the week before we played them. Nasty too. They destroyed them. You see what I'm saying? The Col- the the Colts lost to the Baltimore Ravens the week before we played them. Yeah. So it ain't this ain't this ain't nah that that's stuff in the past is in the game. Nah, you you play this like it is 2019, 2020 season, and you say, you know what? I don't care what happened, 10 years, 30 years. Most of these guys on the team ain't even they haven't even been in the, the Colts history like that. Mm-hmm. Like I, I I was listening to the to the thing, and t- you know, Tennessee Hill was talking about, yeah, they know us, we know them. And I'm sitting there, Tennessee, like, you don't know the coach, you only played them twice, three times. <laughs> Tell you, you only played the coach three times as a Titan. That's it. Yeah. And I don't even know if I'm starting the first game. I don't think, did he start? I don't even know if he started another time. He started the one game last year when, when we beat him. He started the second, the one that they beat. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, a, this is actually your third time facing them. So you yeah. only faced them twice. So no, nah, like screw that. You don't know. You don't know what the past and what the history is. Move mm-hmm. on. You make your new history. Yeah. You know, we got the line up on this offense, man. We we can do this because, like I told man, and I, everybody, you know, like I said, I know I talk a lot. But this freaking right. offense, man. Can't nobody stop this offense, man. You look at y'all want to talk about folks. You look at Ezekiel Elliott, who's supposed to be one of the elite guys in the NFL, yeah. guys that got paid, and we want to sit up and entertain the fact. I can't even believe people want to entertain the fact that Derrick Henry shouldn't have got paid. And you yeah. watch Derrick Henry the way Derrick Henry runs the way now he ran day one. You don't see no let off. And yeah. he is running with a better loaded box than what Ezekiel Elliott has. Zio is not facing an eight to nine man box 60% of the time. He's not. Derrick Henry is facing a loaded box almost 80% of the time, and he's still getting 100 yards a game. God, that is spectacular. And you're talking about rotating him out so he's still not running every single play 
or uh for uh foreman niggles they're getting reps too Mm-hmm. Derek, it man, like, come on, man, let's go. Like I told you about that that Houston game we played, and I said, man, everybody, man, Derek about to get about 107. Derek gonna get his, man. Definitely. But I think, I think, I think, I think what happens is Corey Davis, AJ Brown, they make them. I mean, they make them pay. You make them pay. You make them pay on the outside because we didn't do that. We didn't do that in the first the first game. Definitely not. That was one of the things you kept on telling me while we were watching the game, and it's true. Um, there was no, nothing, uh, there was no deep threat at all. So hopefully we can, we can, uh, establish that, uh, establish a little bit better of the play action, but hopefully, you know, we get this W in, we should get this W in, uh, we'll be eight and three on top of the AFC South and, um, things should be looking bright for the Titans. I know we're a little bit injured and stuff like that, but who isn't it's, it's the NFL, right? So again, um, that is our breakdown preview. We'll be, we'll be doing the post game like always probably Sunday night. And if you guys, um, haven't followed me or subscribed, please do. And remember if you guys like any of the cage talk for the UFC stuff that I've been doing, um, I actually have a separate account now I have another channel. It's called cage talk. You can look it up. Um, kind of switched it up on you guys, not on purpose, just, uh, for business parts. But uh, again, it's cage talk. Uh, Check it out on Spotify. Check it out on Apple uh, podcast as well. Just like you can find here. If you don't want to see our, our uh, faces, you can listen to our voices. But again, uh, Gerald, thank you so much for coming in, man. Uh, It's always a pleasure to hear your, your, um, your insight and your wisdom on, on the game of football and, and just defense itself, you know, not only do you know what you're talking about, I actually learn from listening to you too. So it's, it's nice. You know, I feel like a, a vet sometimes listening. I'm like, yeah, cause then half the shit that you say, I tell people when the, the Dallas fans, I'm like, well, this, this guy, <laughs> they're like, man, this guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> but and, and just, and just so the fans and, and everybody that's out there listening, just so you guys know, cause some of you guys might be like, who is this guy? Like, who is this guy, man, I'm, I'm, I was a fourth round draft pick out of university of Southern Mississippi. Um, came in, uh, I was blessed to be drafted by uh, Jeff Fisher. I, I was coming in to be a special team guy. I was coming in to be a special teams guy. Um, but, you know, my whole life, man, I've been a student of the game. Always been told I was too small, you know, to, not, not big enough to play linebacker. I played all three uh, linebacker positions in college. Um, you know, I got multiple accolades on the college ham, but man, when I got to the NFL, man, I, I came in with a group uh, of guys uh, named uh, Keith Bullock, David Thornton, uh, um, Stephen Tully, um, a bunch of other guys, man, um, especially in that secondary. Uh, Van Vosh was still here. Um, Javon Curse was here. Uh, Hayward had just left. Um, so, you know, I, I, I came up under a group, man, where I had to earn every, every last thing. And uh, I was blessed and fortunate to actually start my rookie year, played in a few games, um, started my second year, had some injuries. So, you know, like I like when I talk, man, like I know it's some guys are like, oh, man, well, this guy, like, you ain't really play a lot. Guys, I, I do this. And I, I'm a coach now, and I'm, I'm a coach now. I've always been a student of the game. And so, you know, my perspective always comes from a player uh, slash coach you know, of the game and and things of that nature. So, man, I appreciate you, Alex, for having me on. But, uh, guys, make sure you guys um, subscribe. And I got to tell you guys all the time, especially if you're a Titans fan, I don't care how many people you support, support your Titans uh, fan base because nobody in the national level will. And you want to make sure that we, you know, you get on with the guys that do it the right way early and often because the way that, that the way that Amy is uh, doing um, in this program, man, it's going to be some bandwagoners um, yeah. from the national from the national level that is not going to be able to cover your Titans teams the way that uh, Alex and and other people do. You know, you you want to make sure you get in with those that have been in from day one. So you definitely, know, it's a blessing. It's a blessing just to be able to talk with you guys and. I appreciate everything you guys do, and it means a lot to me. So, you know, anytime. But make sure you guys subscribe, like, 
not only subscribe, but make sure you guys, uh, if you guys got other Titan fans and things in that nature, guys that just want to know the inside scoop, man, y'all send the like, you know, you guys mm -hmm. copy and paste and send it in the group, make sure that everybody has it um, so we can continue to spread the love uh, with everybody. Yeah, thank you, man. Uh, appreciate that. And uh, guys, we're going to wrap this baby up. Again, thank you, Gerald, for coming on, like always. And uh, like we always say, man, tighten up, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, baby. Tighten up. Eight and three, baby. Oh, tighten up. There, Henry. <laughs> There's my man getting hyped up. All right. <laughs> Have a good one, guys.